So today, Dr. Scholz, we're talking about tumor size and tumor placement. I think a lot of times when patients come into these situations, they see a larger tumor and they think, oh no, it's gonna be more aggressive, but does that necessarily dictate the nature of the cancer? So there's a lot of ambiguity and now we can bring some clarity to it. So my first question is, um, you know, when you have a large tumor, does that necessarily mean it's one Gleason grade or over another? So tumor size is one of the things that could predict for whether it's likely to spread or not. Tumor grade, uh, the Gleason score is a more important indicator than the tumor size. Uh, then there's issues of where it's located in the prostate. Now that we have PSMA PET scans, we can work, work backwards and be more confident that uh, when we're looking at where the tumor is in the prostate, we can at least work from a premise that there's nothing spread already. PSMA PET scans are not perfect, but they're pretty accurate. They're about 90% accurate in Gleason 7 patients and about 80% accurate in Gleason 8, 9, and 10 patients. In the past, all these size issues and grade issues were to try and predict if there was spread. Now we have PSMA PET scans, we kind of know if there's spread. When you have a PSMA PET scan that shows no spread, how important is it to know how big the tumor is or where it's located in the gland. And there is some relevance here, but I think looking at it historically, we have to first remember that it makes a big difference whether someone wants to do surgery or radiation. The surgeons have a problem because if the tumor's up near the edge or outside the edge, when they cut the gland out, they're gonna leave cancer behind. The radiation therapists don't have that same problem because they can spray over the edge of the gland with the radiation. In the past, if there was something spreading through the edge of the gland, that was uh, thought to be an indication and that there's greater risk of spread again. And we come back to this issue that, well, with a good scan, you know there isn't spread. So even though there had been thoughts in the past that if it was spread outside the gland, through the edge of the gland, that it would spread further around the rest of the body, we now know that that's not the case. So the size of the tumor, whether it's through the edge of the prostate or not, in this new era of PSMA PET scans, doesn't really tell us that much unless you want to do surgery. And I've been a strong advocate against surgery. I'm always steering my patients toward the radiation options rather than the surgical options. Interestingly now, as of 2023, the uh, importance of the tumor size and the tumor grade has been much reduced, whether it's through the edge of the prostate, a positive margin or so to speak, or not, is not as important as it used to be because all those things were used to try and predict spread. And with our scans, we're uh, much more confident that there isn't spread when the scan is clear. Before I get to my next question, I just wanted to remind you that we're a nonprofit, and if you would like to join our cause and donate, you can do so at pcri.org forward slash donate. Our goal is to get these videos out to people all around the world. Now back to my next question on tumor size and location. So what about in cases of biopsies? So there's targeted biopsies and there's random needle biopsies. I had a patient say that their urologist said, you know what, the tumor's so large, we don't even need to do a targeted biopsy, let's just do a random needle biopsy. And in my brain, I'm going, well, that's still more needles and that's still more risk of infection. So, you know, if there is a large tumor, is a targeted biopsy still necessary? Well, there's all kinds of targeted biopsies. With a large tumor, or let's say someone can actually feel an abnormality with their finger, uh, you could argue that when you're going after the spot that you can feel with your finger, that that's a targeted biopsy. You're not using an MRI to target it, but you're still targeting it. The whole point in the past was to make sure that you got enough uh, biopsies so that you didn't miss cancer. Now with targeted biopsies of, of the many different types that we have, the whole point is to make sure you get a representative sense of what the Gleason grade is. So you wanna do a few samples of the target but to do extensive samples of the whole prostate with uh, modern imaging, we know where the tumor is, so we don't need to go biopsying normal prostate tissue anymore. And yes, you wanna limit the number of biopsies to limit the risk of serious infection. We know that if you do 12 biopsies, that the uh, one in 50 men is gonna be hospitalized with a serious septic complication. So another question we get is, does it matter what side the tumor is on of the prostate? And is there one side that's more likely to have tumors than another? Yeah, even though the prostate's relatively small, the, an the anatomy is a little bit complex because we have urethra running through the middle of the gland. And whenever people want to consider doing some sort of focal treatment, it uh, becomes a little more easy to do focal treatment if the tumor is lateral to one side rather than right in the middle. 
It also becomes easier to do focal treatment if you have a larger prostate rather than a small prostate. If you have a small prostate with a tumor in it, you, people need to remember that you always have to put a margin around the treatment to make sure that you get it all. And if it's a small prostate to begin with and you're putting a margin around the tumor, you may end up treating the whole prostate with your focal therapy. So the size of the prostate, the laterality of the uh, tumor, of course, uh, all those things are important. Are, is there more than one location? Sometimes men have two tumors. It's not uncommon. Uh, these things are very important. I think it might be good just to take a second and talk about how we describe things in the prostate. It's sort of confusing. So the prostate, if you think of, uh, uh, of a person who's standing and the bladder sits above the prostate, the urethra of the tube goes through the middle of the gland and then out the penis for urinating, the prostate surrounds the urethra. The top of the, of the prostate is called the base because the, the top is wider than the lower portion, which is called the apex. So it comes down sort of like a pyramid shape that's upside down. Base, apex, and then the mid gland would be in the middle. And then you have front and back. Behind the prostate, you have the rectum. And this is how the doctor can feel the, the posterior portion of the prostate with his finger. And 90% of tumors occur on the posterior portion of the prostate. Those are called peripheral zone tumors and 10% occur in the front of the prostate, anteriorly in the transition zone. Transition zone tumors are thought to be somewhat more benign than peripheral zone tumors. This becomes important because when people go through a biopsy, uh, and they're still doing random biopsies out there, uh, when they go through MRIs, when they go through PET scans, the description of where the tumor is located should match with all these scans. They don't always match. Perhaps there's uh, mistakes that are made or, there's tumors that uh, were missed on biopsy. Uh, so th there's a process of making sure that the PET scan, the MRI, the biopsy, the physical exam, if they feel a lump, are all pointing to the same location in the gland. So today we talked about tumor size and tumor location. One of the reasons we brought this up is because we wanna make sure that just because maybe the tumor's in a certain location or their tumor is maybe small or large, that does not indicate what type of cancer it is. As you know, prostate cancer is very unique to the person. There's different types of Gleason grades, and it's important to get that biopsy in order to know how aggressive the cancer could be. Now, it's also important to know that just because you may have a large tumor or not a large tumor, either way, it's important to get a targeted biopsy. Random needle biopsies and biopsying you know, normal prostate tissue really aren't necessary in today's day and age with the advent of all this new technology. So do your research, find out where you can get a targeted biopsy near you, get the imaging that you need and the help that you need. If you need help with your prostate case and you want to get more information about your specific prostate cancer, you can go to our website at pcri.org forward slash helpline and you can fill out a form there and a prostate cancer patient who has been through this situation can call you back. They've been trained by our medical oncology team and they can answer a lot of your questions so that you have better outcomes with your medical team and those discussions that you're having in the medical office. Also, if you would like to donate, you can do so at pcri.org forward slash donate and join our cause. We want to get these videos out to people all around the world. But most of all, please remember, you're not alone. We are here for you. And thank you so much for watching this video.